Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So I just thought, let's try and do some more abstract art. Um, and then use the few finders to try and find some nice bits. This is just some Windsor Violet mixed with white. You could use a colour shaper, an old gift card, credit card. Acrylic paint is what I'm using, by the way. I've actually said that, didn't I? Not? So this is quite opaque. a very thin layer so it will dry very quickly but I have this now cadmium lemon yellow so as you know I'm trying to learn about painting properly all the time so they use that for fauxism and that's um I've been using this to I'm painting a cat big canvas just now and I'm using this and it makes everything just so much brighter. So I'm going to use some of this. It's like custard, but not school custard, bright custard. <laughs> and then I'm going to add some of that in, and I think I'll use this when I do it. But I want to make sure this is dry. It's still a little damp. I'm actually going to sponge it on. This is my first time using Pebio paint, actually. Right, stay away from that side, Kirsten. That, that's a sign to stop. That is a happy background colour. We're mostly dry. I'm going to try some intense locks. I might try it in navy blue. help my art supplies are frightening me
So it is completely dry now and I am going to use some stencils that are not stencils. Bits of bubble wrap and some netting and something else. So this is Win Windsor Newton Windsor Violet mixed in with iridescent pearlescent from Sennelier. So the pearlescent makes the purple very shiny and luxurious. And I've only recently discovered that that's a thing that you can do. So anyway, I'm using a soft calligraphy brush that's hard to apply pressure through in this corner. And it's made because the netting is quite rigid and there is a thickness to it. It's not, you know, it's not sat directly on top of the paper. There is a bit of a gap. Um, I've had, it was quite hard to push the paint through. However, I really like the effect it's given. So what I do now is I try it with a different brush. This is a hog bristle brush. It's a stiff brush. And um, it's much easier to push the paint through the holes in the netting. But the effect that you get from it is very different. And I like this. I like how you just changing a movement, changing a tool, just changing something can, you know, it really can just radically change what it is that you're doing. So we're basically still having shiny purple squares, but they come out very different. So this time for the bubble wrap, I am using what's left of the shiny purple. I've added more pearlescent and I've added black. Um, so we've got this lovely shiny dark grey now. And this is just a small piece of bubble wrap. I'm trying not to press too hard with it so that we get a lot of the nice crinkle, um, you know, circles that are not full and I just think that because that purple's in the sum of that Windsor Violet is in with this dark grey it's very cohesive it works very well together I've just added some white acrylic paint to that dark grey mixture to make it a lighter grey. Now this is a piece of chipboard that I have glued some foam squares to. These are just thin kids foam squares that I cut out of a sheet of foam and I just stuck them onto the chipboard with a bit of glue stick. Um, and I'm trying to press very gently because the edges of the chipboard um, will lean on the paint and add a different shape. I need to trim round it.
So this is mostly dry now and I'm peeling off the masking tape that I've put around the borders. This was not to create a border on the page. This was to um, keep the watercolour paper um, flat to reduce um, the likelihood of it warping when the wet paint etc um, comes in contact with it. Um, I also just stuck it down onto a plastic covering of a sketchbook. I find that's quite handy. <laughs> These are my viewfinders. The bigger one is A6 postcard size and the smaller one is A artist trading card or ATC size. And what I'm doing is, as a large piece, it's a bit bland. However, as smaller pieces, especially when you find the more interesting areas, it's... Um, it's brilliant. I love it. So I seen this on Denise Love's channel um, and I thought that's a great idea. So what I'm going to do in the next video though is I am going to um, use the postcard size ones and just decorate them some more. And I'm just That's just a normal pencil that I'm marking out my square with and then I'm just cutting them, cutting them out with scissors. You can also put your viewfinder at a slant because at the end of the day when you cut it out it's still going to be a straight postcard size. Um, the viewfinders as well, I just made them with watercolour paper. So I drew round a postcard for the A6 size, I drew round a postcard with a pencil and then I drew a border outside of that with the pencil that was wider. And I cut out the middle, the postcard size, and then I cut round the other border. And there we have it. As technical as that. So I've been um, collecting these circles for a wee while now <laughs> and what I do is it's all the edges of the watercolour paper. Obviously watercolour paper is um, very thick and sturdy so all the off cuts I've been making these circles with um, rather than throwing them in the bin or keeping them a sort of bookmark type. Um, ephemera and one day I will use these circles I do have plans for them but right now I'm enjoying collecting them because you actually get some lovely little images on these circles and you can actually because they're mini they highlight some things like maybe a, a way you've done a brush stroke or you know a shape that you wouldn't normally see they're more highlighted on these circles than they are on the bigger picture. So, I like them. And that's my guilty secret, or one of my many guilty secrets. So, we got four A6 postcards, plus some circles from that A3 
piece and I'm very happy with them. And I just want to say thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.